For this lesson, we'll be focusing on passive filters. Now this is going to be a two-part video session due to the fact that active filters and passive filters share some common ground. So let's go over what filters are. A filter is a circuit that produces a frequency response characteristic based on its desired design, which passes certain frequencies and rejects or annutenuates other frequencies. So what defines a passive filter? A passive filter contains passive components, which are made up resistors, capacitors, and inductors. Usually you can tell if it's a passive filter if it doesn't have a external power supply or any active components such as op amps. So let's jump right in and discuss an important filter analysis key term. This is known as critical frequency or cutoff frequency. And critical frequency is the frequency at the point of a passband which a specific point of the response drops to negative 3 dB or half power. This point determines the cutoff frequency for a realistic filter. All right, in an ideal world, which we have in the bottom left illustration, you'll see a pass band drop directly off. It goes straight down once you hit a critical frequency. Well, unfortunately, when you do filter design, that's not realistic. It has a roll off or a slope at that critical point. So if you look at the illustration to the right, you'll see a nice pass band area, and then it slopes downward or it rolls off. Well, when you count negative three decibels, that's your critical frequency or your cutoff frequency. With electrical filters, there's four common types. The first one we'll be going over is the low pass filter. A low pass filter passes frequencies below the critical frequency or cutoff frequency and attenuates all other frequencies. And usually you can make a first order low pass filter with a resistor capacitor or an inductor and a resistor. And we have the circuits shown here with their associated uh, equations. And you'll see a Bode plot to the right that illustrates the low pass filter. You'll see at lower frequencies it has a pass band and it rolls off at the higher frequencies, hence the term low pass filter. The next common filter type is the high pass filter. It's the opposite of the low pass. It passes frequencies after the critical frequency and attenuates all other frequencies. So just like before, you can make this same filter with a capacitor and resistor and a resistor and an inductor. Now the difference between the low pass and the high pass, the circuits look similar but the inductor and the resistors are swapped around as well as the capacitor and resistors. And again, we have the equations associated with those the particular circuits. And if you look at the Bode plot to the right, you'll see at the low frequencies, there's a cutoff or a stop band. And at the higher frequencies, it passes, hence the term high pass filter. The third common filter is a band pass filter. Now this is a combination between a low pass filter and a high pass filter because the band pass filter passes frequencies at the critical frequency only and attenuates all other frequencies. So in other words, you're gonna have that critical frequency mark and that's gonna pass only that frequency and then as you go lower in frequencies, it'll start rolling off and then as you go higher in frequencies, it'll also have a roll off. So it's only gonna, so it's gonna look like a hill on a Bode plot. And again, we provided just simple band pass filters with their associated equations. Now with this one, an additional equation is provided to determine the bandwidth. The last type of filter we're going over is the band stop filter. Now this is still a combination between a low pass filter and a high pass filter, just used in a slightly different way. Because a band pass filter is also known as a notch. It attenuates frequencies at the critical point and passes all other frequencies. In other words, if you had a Bode plot, it's going to have a straight line and then a little notch or a dip in one little area, and that's going to be your critical frequency area. And same as the band pass filter, we have our circuits with our associated equations, and again, we have an equation to determine your bandwidth. Now, the last thing I want to touch base on is a little bit of Bode plot review. Now, I just want to go over this just a little bit, just to give you a FYI type of slide. We're not going to go into great detail of Bode plots for this particular filter design because we dealt with this a little bit in frequency response video, but I just want to go over it just a little bit. When you have multiple filters, in other words, in a cascading configuration, you can create multiple orders. The first order, which is ones we went over in the previous slides, is where you're gonna have a slope or roll off of 20 decibels per decade. And then when you, as you cascade multiple filters, you can create a second order, third order, and so on. And some of your textbooks has various designs and how to calculate them. We're not gonna go in great depth for this one, but I just wanna bring this to your attention. That way, if you see a, a higher slope or a higher roll off, you know how they came across that. All right, let's jump right into our first example. And like most of them, we gotta start off with an easy one. 
For this one, we're going to identify the filter and the cutoff frequency. So this one's going to be pretty simple. Now we have right here a little standard Bode plot, and we have ourselves a nice little frequency response, and we want to determine our filter and our cutoff frequency. And just like most Bode plots, we have decibels on our left, and then we have our lowercase omega down right here on the x-axis. And for those of you who don't remember, omega equals 2 pi frequency. So let's identify the filter first. Well, looking at this, it looks like it's dropping off until you get the higher frequencies. When you get to a higher frequency, it looks like we have a little bit of a pass. So that means it's passing at high frequencies. So right off the bat, just a simple identification, this looks like a high pass filter. So that was pretty easy. And again, we gotta start you off in the easy one to get your feet wet. Next, we need to determine the cutoff frequency. Now, I know I said we weren't going in depth as far as Bode plots, but this is a very important term to get used to and knowing how to identify. Now, as we talked about, anytime you want to learn the cutoff frequency, it's going to be negative three decibels. When you count negative three decibels, that's going to be where your cutoff frequency is going to be. So we're going to look at right here. So we have zero, zero decibels. And you want to go from there, three down, three decibels down. So it's going to be one, two, and then negative three. So right here on this x-axis, you have negative three decibels. So I'll put it right over here, negative three, right there. Well, going across, negative three, looks like it's right there. That is where our call frequency is going to be. And then going down to our x-axis down here, so this is 100, 200, 300. It's going to be this point right here. So that's going to be 300 and that's going to be omega. So we want to determine the actual frequency, which means if you have 300 equals 2 pi f, 2 pi frequency. That's pretty easy. All you have to do is divide both sides by 2 pi. And that's going to give us a frequency of 47.75 hertz. And that right there is your cutoff frequency. And please excuse my handwriting, it is not that great today. So that was a very easy one. Let's do another example. Alright, for our next example, it's going to be similar to the first one, but this one has a little curveball in there. If an 8 ohm resistor was supplied, determine the required capacitor based on the following Bode plot. We're looking at this plot, we're going to do something similar to the first example. First we want to identify what kind of filter it is. We can look at the magnitude here and see at the lower frequencies, it seems to be passing them all. And then as it gets higher, it seems to be dropping off or having a roll off. And it looks like it's rolling off at 20 decibels per decade. Which right then and there, that tells us this is going to be a low pass filter because it's passing only the low frequencies. So we know right away that's a low pass filter. And this one is telling us right away that we're going to have an 8 ohm resistor and a capacitor. And if you remember from the PowerPoint, you're going to have a configuration that looks something like this. And I'll do my best to sketch it somewhat decent. And we know right now this is 8 ohms, and we want to find our capacitor. Same thing as last time. Let's go ahead and find our cutoff frequency. So what we're going to do is count negative 3 decibels. So we have 1, 2, 3. So it's going to be this line going across right here, which is negative 3 decibels. And then we're going to look at this frequency response and determine where it intersects on our x-axis. So we have 3 right there. And if you follow this down, it looks like it's going 10 times 10 to the 6. And just like most booty plots, it's going to be a lowercase omega. So it's 10 times 10 to the 6. And that's right there is going to be our cutoff frequency. Well, since we know this is a low pass frequency, we can use these equations to our right. Right now I'm going to leave it in these units right here. Just because it makes it easy, I can just use this guy right here. I don't have to convert it to frequency and use this guy right here. I'm just going to leave it with this equation. So in other words, we know our cutoff is 1 over RC. In other words, resistance times capacitance. So we know 10 times 10 to the 6 equals... 1 over, we know our resistor is 8 ohms, 8 ohms, times your capacitor. This is pretty easy, all it is a little bit of algebra. 
All we have to do is multiply 10 times 10 to the 6 times 8, and that's going to give us, that's going to be 80 times 10 to the 6 e equals 1 over your capacitance. And then obviously we just got to do the reciprocal of that one, and capacitor value is going to be 1.25 times 10 to the 8. So right there, we are able to find our capacitor based on this Bode plot. Let's do one more example. All right, for our last example, we have a bandpass filter, and it has a bandwidth of 10 kilohertz and an upper cutoff frequency of 500 kilohertz. And based on inventory, the desired capacitor would be 12 nanofarads. So we need to determine the ideal inductor to meet these specifications. Well, we have an illustration right here just to kind of help us out of what we're trying to understand what we're looking for. So we have an upper cutoff frequency of 500 kilohertz, that's given. And then we have a bandwidth, which is from here to here, and that's going to be 10 kilohertz. And we want to determine our inductor. If you look to the right down here, we have an equation right here that we can use. Unfortunately, we don't have our center frequency. We don't have this guy right here. But we can figure this guy out and in turn figure the center frequency just by using a little bit of algebra because you can determine your bandwidth by subtracting your high cutoff frequency minus your low. Well, we already have this guy and this guy, so we can use just a little simple math to determine your low cutoff. So in other words, our bandwidth is going to be 10 kilohertz, and that's going to equal your high cutoff frequency, and that's going to be 500 kilohertz minus your low cutoff frequency. And all we got to do is move these two guys around over here. So in other words, your low cutoff frequency equals 500 kilohertz minus your bandwidth. And I don't think we need a calculator for that. That's going to give us 490 kilohertz. So right there, we already found that guy. So that's 490 kilohertz. Please excuse my handwriting. All right, so why is that a good thing? Well, with these two, the low cutoff and the high cutoff, you can use this equation right here to determine your center frequency. So in other words, it's going to be your center frequency equals square root of your high cutoff, which is 500 kilohertz, times your low cutoff, which is 490 kilohertz. And a simple plug and chug in the calculator is going to give us an answer of I'll tell you what, I'll just round to 495 kilohertz. So right there, we already found this guy as well. Well, now, since we found that, we can use this equation, use a little bit of algebra to find our inductor, which is that guy right there. So let's see if I can make some room. I'll put it down here. I'll say 495 kilohertz equals, and that's 1 over 2 pi and it's going to be the square root of your inductor times your capacitor. And we know our capacitor is 12 nanofarads. So I'm going to put right here 12 nanofarad. All right. Well, what I'm going to do is I can get rid of the 2 pi. I can go ahead and multiply both sides by it. And that's going to be 3.11 times 10 to the 6. And that's going to equal 1 over the square root of and your inductor times your capacitor, which is 12 nanofarad. And it looks like I'm running out of space. I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these variables to the left and move everything up. And I think next I want to get rid of the 1 over, so I want to get rid of the reciprocal. So it's going to be 3.215 times 10 to the negative 7. And that's going to equal the square root of your inductor times your capacitor. And then, of course, keep going. Let's get rid of the square root here. So I'm going to go ahead and square both sides. And that's going to give me 1.034 times 10 to the 3. And that's going to equal your inductor times your capacitor. And all i got to do is divide both sides by 12 nanofarads. And that's going to give me a final inductance of 8.616. That's going to be micro-hand rays. Eh, 
we could try to find a standard value and just go ahead and round down a little bit and say 8.5 microhenries. Because again, if you're trying to buy stock ones off the shelf. Yeah. Hopefully I gave you enough information to get your feet wet of how to understand these Bode plots as well as how you can manipulate these equations to determine your filter design. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know and I hope you all have a good day.